Thanks for coming, guys. Uh, this is the more detailed tutorial on how to create a knockout portfolio, and it's being presented by uh, Jen at yeah. Okay, go ahead, Jen. Hi, everyone. Um, let me know if you can't hear us well, um, but we will get started right now with our slideshow, and then we'll have plenty of time after for questions. Um, I'm joined here by Al Rossman, my colleague, and we're going to start by giving you more of a high-level overview, and then we'll get into um, more of the nitty-gritty and some things that you can do with the hands. How's the volume so far? I'm going to take no response as a good thing. <laughs> Just let me know if at any point you're having trouble hearing us or if uh, you need us to repeat anything or slow down the pace or anything like that. Totally open to feedback. Um, so just to start at the very, very beginning, I thought we could tell you a little bit about what Behance is and why we've partnered with Moore and where we're coming from as we're sharing information today. So Behance is the leading online platform for creatives to showcase and discover work. What that means for you is that it's the biggest platform for traffic, uh, for getting discovered, and for really amalgamating traffic into whatever you'd like to see happen with your work, whether that be sales or perhaps an internship, working in-house with a creative company, or just making more connections so that you can collaborate with people. Um, it's also really great for networking and just finding work that will help inspire you um, or motivate you along your path. And about 16 months ago, we were acquired by Adobe Systems, so now you can actually publish directly to Behance from amazing tools like Photoshop or InDesign. So because we're the leading platform, um, this is why we've also partnered with a lot of art and design colleges like Moore. And we hope to um, continue working with Moore schools so that we can really bring the amazing work that's being produced to the forefront. This is the gallery that we've built for more. The um, live site is something we'll visit after in the Q&A if you have any questions. But one of our main goals today is to really encourage you to sign up. Creating a portfolio is quite simple. Um, Al can touch on any specifics uh, during the question period. But this is something that we really feel is a, an amazing free opportunity that you have at your fingertips. So by not participating, um, you'll, you'll miss out on a lot of great advantages. This is something that the Career Center is going to be sending out whenever people want to hire for more. It's also the first place that people will look when they want to see the work. And once you graduate, it's a great way to stay in touch with alumni and see what your former classmates are producing, who they're working with, and what kind of things they're creating. A lot of work on Behance is digital or in the realm of graphic design, but one of the questions we're often asked is, is it only for designers? And the answer is absolutely not. It's for anyone who's creative. So we've seen um, pretty much every use case under the sun of visual representations of work, but a couple of things you wanted to highlight is the fact that you can embed from other sites like Vimeo or YouTube, and without having to start your play count over from zero, you can add these right into a project, and that can be a great way to show performance art or short films, things like that. If you're creating physical work like product design, furniture, um, you can document that visually and display it in your uh, digital portfolio really nicely. And we're seeing a huge rise in makeup art, fashion, um, you name it. So as long as there's a way to communicate that visually, and that goes for other uh, disciplines like writing, poetry as well, um, you have a home for it on Behance. So we'd love to share some tips that we've learned about self-promotion because going through the steps of creating a portfolio is actually quite easy, um, but there is more of an art to it when it comes to doing it really well. So um, we wanted to highlight some of the things that we've learned because we look at creative work every single day and um, ways that you can go from making a good portfolio to a really great portfolio and how you can utilize this as your first impression to stand out to a prospective hiring manager, recruiter, um, or client. 
Um, so editing yourself, your portfolio is only as good as your worst project. I think that is very, very important because if someone's actually looking at your portfolio, um, you've got maybe a couple of minutes at most to actually see the work that's being done. Um, so if you don't feel great about your work, a prospective employer or a client may not feel great about it either. Um, I think you also have to spend a really a lot of a lot of time thinking about digital medium um, because if you're working in something that is physical, like um, architecture, or if you're working in something that you're building or making with your hands, um, you know it's kind of hard to convey that digitally. So um, putting a lot of thought into the project, not just the slapdash of your images and things like that, is very very important. Exactly. So building on what Al said, this is a, an image from a photographer's portfolio, and although she walks away from a given shoot with hundreds and hundreds of outtakes, she will only choose maybe one or two from a photo story, and she treats her portfolio very much like an editor would treat the layout of a magazine, and she'll only take the best of the best so that all of her work is breathtaking, it's all extremely strong, and it creates a huge impact when you look at it, whether you're glancing at it quickly or you have a lot of time to spend um, reading her descriptions and going through everything she's added. And showing relevant work is super, super important. So if you are, let's say, a graphic designer, but you're showing a lot of photography projects, um, you're not conveying what you want to be doing. Um, of course, you know, there's always the opportunity that you maybe get into photography because you're interested in it, but if you want to be a graphic designer, Show your graphic design work. Um, you know, show what you are passionate about because as you show what you're passionate at, you also show what you're good at, and that's what gets you the most opportunities. Exactly. Um, this is a shot from a photographer who's doing a lot of photojournalism and these really personal photo stories where he'd go to intimate things like rainbow gatherings and to a lot of scenes and locations where photographers often weren't allowed and. He really stayed true to the fact that, you know, this was his passion and he loved documenting people exactly as they were and trying not to alter them too much, but really just show them in their element. And from there, he ended up making quite the career and is a correspondent for a number of amazing publications where he can go on site and he's sort of their trusted um, eyes and ears to be able to capture what's happening in a really realistic and, and almost photo diary type fashion. And respecting work, you know, kind of goes back to the self-editing aspect of it, but really, really spending time on what you're putting out there. Um, you know, selecting out of, let's say, 100 images, five that really show what you're doing. Um, and spending time in your text. One of the things that we actually see a lot of um, mm -hmm. is people not spending a ton of time describing or writing about what they're doing. Um, and I think that really helps make the the project a little more personal, not just you know a collection of images of this thing, but like an actual person is working behind this. There's an actual story behind it, um, and really, you know, this is a given space where you can narrate that story, um, you know, and really put something interesting behind the work that you're doing. Right, and there's nothing more heartbreaking than seeing an amazing project where there's a spelling mistake in you know, God forbid, the title or the description, because that will obviously hurt you um, if you're using this as your professional portfolio. Um, this is an example of a project on Behance that's showing the hand-painted signs and branding for a cafe in Brooklyn. And, you know, these are just four of several images that they added, but you can see they're, sh they're shooting the work from different angles. They're showing some hand-painting the sign. Um, they're using natural daylight. They have somebody coming out of the cafe, which shows the scale of the mural. And all of this, um, as Al mentioned, really creates more of a story instead of just putting your work up there and hoping that people will connect the dots. Um, you're really leading them down the path of, of, you know, how you got from A to B. Yeah, it can be hard showing physical products like these. You know, you can say just take a picture of, like, the book and just leave it at that. But if you get different angles or close-ups or things like that where... You know, if you're actually holding something, it gives you that effect. You know, you want to convey that when you're producing your portfolio, and that will help get that message across. Um, being descriptive is very, very, very important. Um, you know, this kind of goes back into, you know, telling that story, but, you know, what did you do here? You know, if you're showing, let's say, uh, like we had the... Uh, 
yeah, like something like this, like a, a bridge project. So this is, I think, the, the, the highlight. highlight yeah. Um, you know, were you take? Did you just take the pictures of this? Were you helping design the layout of where all the shrubbery is? You know, what were you doing in this? Um, you know, it gives a perspective, employer, client, an idea of like what you're really good at. So you can kind of see where I was trying to tie all these things in together. So being descriptive really shows what you're good at, what you are trying to show off, and you know, maybe what you want to do in the future. Right, and this is extremely important when you think about the questions somebody might have for you um, once they see your work for the first time. So a great rule of thumb and something that we always recommend is thinking about your physical portfolio and all of the things that you would say if you had the chance to meet with somebody in person and you were sitting across the table from them with your book in the middle. So you might explain that you worked with a team of people or that this is a class project or what kind of timeline you are working with, things like that. Um, because your online portfolio is often your first impression, this is where you have to answer those questions. So this is a screenshot from the National Geographic website that was redesigned, and it's really important that this person says it was a fan project or that they were working with the National Geographic as an official client. Um, you also want to explain with something like this, whether you're doing the graphics, the front-end development, the back-end, um, you name it, so that somebody can see this and quickly understand what your skill set is and what it would be like to bring you on um, as a team member, as a client, um, you name it. Sharing the process goes back into um, showing the narration, showing someone behind a project. Um, it can be hard if you're working on, let's say, a painting or something like that to just show a couple of images of this painting. You kind of look at it, you get the idea, like, okay, this is a painting of X, Y, and Z. But if you have different stages of what it is, you can see that this is done by you or, you know, whoever you're working with to work on this. Um, and it kind of gives it a story. It makes it interesting that, oh, yeah, someone actually, like, put their hands and their time um, and their paint into this. Um, you know, this is something showing signage um, for a couple of different companies. You know, you could take take an image of those uh, those signs and like that's fine, but you know, you can see there are people working on this, and you can see that someone actually put time into doing this, um, and that just makes a really interesting project and therefore an interesting portfolio. Mm -hmm. And it's a way to let people see behind the curtain a little bit into your process. It allows them to get a glimpse into what it would be like to work with you, um, and it's also a really great way to get people to appreciate what it is you're doing. So and oftentimes for companies, the hiring manager might not be somebody who's a creative or as um, expert as you are in your field. So by showing them that, you know, in this case they did we pacing and it was to scale and they were doing it on site and there were three of them and it was all done by hand can be really important for somebody to even understand, you know, how long it took and how much care um, went into it. Um, another point on showing your rough sketches, whether it's a prototype, a mock-up, or even your mood board, is that at the beginning, we Al recommended, you know, it's very much about quality versus quantity. So a lot of times people will say, well, then I don't think I have enough work to show, or I don't have 10 projects. And that's okay. It's actually better to have one project that goes into depth um, as, you know, how you were inspired, um, how you use design to solve problems, and how you made your way to the finished product, rather than just having a lot, a lot of projects that aren't as, um, you know, high quality and things that you'd want to stand behind. Yeah, I mean, even to Jen's point, I went back a couple of weeks ago and was looking at old projects or photos and videos that I had, um, and having like a couple of years, like, thoughts behind it, I was able to actually make a project finally, like I put in a really nice, almost like an essay about what we were doing, had like screenshots, pictures, where maybe three or four years ago I might have just shown them the video that I was working on, just I'm like, yeah, I worked on this as an editor. But having some time to actually think about it, I have a really great project that shows like the whole process of at least what I saved, but the thought behind it and like things that happened afterwards. So even for old projects you might have laying around that you're not sure what to do with, you can make something out of it. Um, yeah, and it, it, it goes a long way to be able to look at something with a fresh set of eyes or have a friend or one of your professors look at it as well because they'll see things and have questions that might not be as obvious to you. Um, and being yourself is super, super important when you're making this portfolio. You know, you kind of want things to look um, in line, like in terms of like design and things like that, that, you know, 
makes sense, but you want to have your own flares in there that makes this uniquely your project. You know, we have certain creatives on Behance right now that I can just look at a project and know that's so and so, that's this design company, just by like they have a, a language about their design. Um, there's actually a, a food artist that I follow that like his videos are very, very particular in every single thing that he does. Um, and I can watch the first, you know, 10 seconds of it and know that's who this is. Like, I'm going to sit down and watch it. So this is like the time when you're in school now, you start to cultivate that language, um, that thumbprint on all of your work. And I think Behance really helps that because you can show all of your stuff in one place and it reaches millions of people, not just whoever is sitting in front of the portfolio. And when you're sharing things in your portfolio that you're passionate about or the content really is in line with things that you're excited about, that will translate and that can lead to some amazing connections. Some of the examples we're showing here are personal projects that ended up going um, a really long way for the creative. So the first one is from the Montreal designer, a Canadian designer who really loved the galaxy and astrology and um, planet. So she made a zine that was just for herself that allowed her to showcase not only content that she loved, but all of these um, sort of rule-breaking layout designs that she wanted to do. And she was able to, you know, art direct herself and put things in the margins and have things be full bleed. And um, this was one of her most popular projects in her Behance portfolio. It gained uh, her a number of followers and also resulted in a ton of traffic. Um, this next one's an example from a designer who wanted to illustrate different puns and funny things. I think this project was called Nerds in Love. Um, so it says, the text is small, if you, I don't know if you can see it, but it says your sweetest pie with the pie symbol. And um, these ended up being so wildly popular because a lot of people were like, hey, I'm, you know, I'm a nerd, I love design, and these illustrations are adorable. And so she started selling them as postcards or one-off prints. And she could do that directly through our site, which I will show you after. Um, the last one is a photographer who uh, did a project called Water Wigs. And this actually got picked up by the Huffington Post and a number of different media outlets because it was really funny, but it was also so well done. He filled up water balloons and dropped them on different bald men's heads. And, you know, it's obviously really funny to look at, but it shows that, you know, not only is he super well-versed in his craft, but he doesn't take himself too seriously. And I think that that is something that everyone can connect with, whether it's humor or something that's nostalgic or personal in some way. So we're going to shift gears now that we've gone through some of the ways that we think you can really um, edit yourself and curate your work to have a, a, a knockout portfolio. And we want to highlight some of the things that might not be as obvious that you can do with Behance. And everything that we're going to um, chat with you about today is free and it's also available to you long after you graduate. Um, so Al's going to walk you through uh, some of the different areas that you might want to leverage. Um, whether it's now or later on, but you know the the first takeaway, first and foremost, is to just start by creating your portfolio. Um, so this is what the main Behance page looks like. Uh, you can see that you've got all your projects here on the right hand side, and the stats on the left. Um, this is Tegan White. Uh, she's an illustrator, but she's been featured in tons and tons of different networks that we have. Um, over 80,000 views, tons of different things, but now she's taking that online persona and now, um, I guess, monetizing is what you could say. Um, yeah. She's now selling her work uh, through different platforms. Um, we link out through places like Etsy or really anything that you have um, selling your work. You can do it very easily uh, with the buy this button on the bottom of each piece of work. Um, when you're uploading a project, you can mark anything that you're putting on there for sale. Um, and when you do that, there's a very simple page where you can link out to wherever you have this being sold. So if you guys have your own marketplace that on campus that maybe is selling work or you want to link out to something else rather than Society6 or Etsy or anything like that, you can do that. This is just an example of what we have. Um, she has her own branded store on Society6 that links right out and they take care of all of the um, transactions, things like that, but it makes it very simple for her because she's got exposure everywhere. Um, you can see she had different like sizes, things like that you can order. Um, next bit that you can do, this is uh, one of our designers, Raywin. This is uh, an example of the work experience that you can link right up to Behance. You can fill it up right on 
the website. I know um, sometimes creative portfolios can be, uh, excuse me, resumes can be actually pretty hard to fill out um, if you don't know the design, like designing of it, or you don't know how to like do a layout, or you just don't want to like fill around with it. This is just a literally a copy and paste for uh, export strengths you can have. Um, so you've got things like experience for companies, skills, awards, education, all that stuff. Um, and this can be downloaded as a PDF so you can quickly send out to someone or a prospective client or employer can look at your portfolio and see that right there and they can download it themselves. Mm -hmm. And this is our job list. Uh, this is actually becoming very, very important for a lot of creatives because uh, here you'll see there are not just um, entry level jobs, but there are actually, we've seen things for like chief design, like, you know, design directors, like all the way up from, you know, like I said, interns to design directors. Um, and this is uh, a place where prospective clients or employers can actually post jobs. And since we have this built into our systems, when you apply for a job, you apply with your Behance portfolio. So there's no need to have a second website or you know have to worry about uploading images or doing anything crazy like that. Once you click apply, um, uh, the employer can see, oh, this is so and so, and here's their portfolio, and here's the work experience. Let me reach out to this person because their stuff looks really great. Um, and this is also, you know, if you guys get in the position where you're looking for uh, internships, I know that I saw on the website that a lot of uh, you guys have very well paid internships. This is where you can potentially be looking for them. Um, or if you guys just want to hopefully post there at some point in the future. And this is free to use and it's really nice for people who are looking to freelance as well because it takes only a few seconds to apply and, and we design this very much with the creative and the artist in mind so that you don't have to repeat yourself along the way and you can um, simply you know, say, hey, I'm interested and here's my portfolio, allowing your work to speak for itself. And this is a little bit that we have called Find Creatives to Follow. You can link up your social networks. So if you guys are Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, which you guys should be on, especially for LinkedIn, um, and any other networks, you can actually link that up with Find Creatives to Follow. Or if you just want to go through looking for um, people that you may know or just want to be interested in, this is where you can start following people. Um, and that's actually a really important part of the Behance experience is um, building a network of people that you either trust or just are interested in for inspiration um, because you never know what experiences are out there or what opportunities might be. Um, so, you know, getting to know people, commenting on work, you know, doing those kind of things can be very, very important. Um, and that actually translates um, directly into the feedback of your network and uh, within more, um, you actually have the ability to have alum, uh, alumni um, have that uh, have them there. So this example here, um, this is an alumni that you can then comment and reach out to and get advice from and you know get feedback from. And that's really really important. Mm -hmm. Feedback is super super important. We make it very easy for you to get that um, with Behance. We have that built in right into our portfolio with comment sections, also a great messaging system, all sorts of things like that. Mm -hmm. And this can be really wonderful for. Um, just gaining advice outside of the classroom and outside of, you know, peer reviews that might already be built into your curriculum by reaching out to somebody who's working with clients or doing the type of work that you hope to do one day. And you can say, you know, hey, I'd love for you to look at my portfolio and let me know what you think. Or you can just ask them, how did you get started? Or what advice do you have to share? And you'll be surprised how, how often creatives are more than willing to give you insight or, um, you know, even share contacts at times. So now we'd like to turn it over to you. Um, we've left a lot of time for questions. Um, we'd be happy to show you anything on the Moore Portfolio site or the Behance Network. And we'll toggle over to the live sites there so that we can have visuals um, to, to go along with your questions. But Please feel free to, you know, ask us anything, no questions too small, and if you're thinking of it, other people in the room are probably wondering the same thing. When you're uploading pictures, do you have a success in like picture width or upload size? Also a DPI that is good for the internet, but also um, make sure that people aren't taking it off of the site? So that's a really good question. Um, so there's a few things we'll unpack a little bit. Um, so with 
uploading projects currently, um, if you are a non-pro site user, so this is just your normal user, you signed up today and you're uploading projects, um, the maximum width is going to be 600 pixels wide. Um, we recommend doing 72 GPI because it's, you know, really for the internet. Right now we're not retina ready. Um, we are rolling that out um, hopefully very soon, but right now it's, you know, standard definition. Um, so 600 pixel wide, uh, there's really no uh, length limit, so you can kind of put up a really, really long image if you wanted to. That's up to you. Um, in terms of, like, co copyright, things like that, or saving images, we don't employ anything like um, flash capsules or anything else like that that would protect images um, because there are tons of things that will just undo that in about two seconds. Um, I can probably rattle off a few if you want to get into it. Um, but what we do have, we use Creative Commons, um, and if, this, if you're not aware of it, um, you should definitely do some research into what Creative Commons is. Um, it allows you to share, but also um, you know, restrict the rights of work being shared on the internet. Um, and we actually, now that we are part of Adobe, we have a very, very um, good system of you know, your work, if you see your work somewhere else that's being you know, plagiarized, things like that without your um, consent, we have a whole team that actually is dedicated to helping you guys out. Um, and we, we do get a number of those on the network from you know, all over the world, so we are pretty active in it. And just to add on to that, because I think it's a really important question, um, one of the reasons that we encourage people to share their work and to have you know, Creative Commons, which prevents any commercial use or any modifications to the work, is because we want people to share it. You'll see that you know, at the bottom of a project, you can always have um, the person's first and last name. You can see more projects by them. We want people to be able to you know, get lost in their work and tweet um, a project that they love or post it to Facebook or pin it, and that way um, the person's always going to get proper attribution. Whereas if we did have any technology in place that didn't allow, you know, right click to save, people would probably take a screenshot, maybe, you know, post it on um, StumbleUpon or on Tumblr, and then you lose any attribution or any link back to the artist um, in question. So that was something that, you know, we thought a lot about when we were first building this site. And then a lot of the decisions we've made thereafter have been in the vein of how can we get the person who's behind this work the most um, exposure possible. Are you able to go back and edit a project once you've already published it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, when you are logged in and uh, you go to your portfolio page, um, if you click on a project on the top right, you'll actually see an edit button. You'll only see this when you're logged in and viewing your own project. Um, and from there, so you know, if you do see, let's say, a spelling error or it's something that you're actually uh, adding more work to, um, you can do that very, very quickly. It brings you through the same, uh, let's say, like work tunnel that you know you would when you first uploaded a project. Um, so it's not like a totally different experience, but it's very, very easy. I think Jen's uh, pulling that up on her portfolio right now. So you, when you're viewing there, you can click. Yep, you got it. You click the edit button, and it brings you right to the same page where you were before. So I can change the text, I can delete an image, um, here's where I can mark something for sale, yep. which I was talking about before, or I can take it off, or I can make the entire project in, as a draft. Let's say I realize that I might not be ready to share it, um, or I wanted to spend more time on it before making it public. Yeah, and the last little bit that Jim was talking about um, is in the settings pane here. Um, this pane is where you can really mark, where you do a lot of stuff for your project, so you can mark the copyright status. Um, this is where you can um, put in co-owners. This is actually really important if you're working with people um, both in and outside of school, because you want to give the credit that's deserved to them. Um, this is uh, the co-owning section where you can just type in a username. So if someone's on the camp, um, you can very quickly just type in their name and say, hey, co-own this project with me, and then they would have sort of full access to this project as well. So that kind of uh, helps if you're working in a team that has a lot of different people. Um, they can all, they don't have to upload the project separately. They can all get, you know, what they deserve. Um, this is also where you can change some privacy settings. So if you're working on something, you know, uh, piece by piece, you're not ready to publish it, um, you can change the viewability here uh, to on, off, things like that. Or you can actually just share it with a specific person if you wanted to. So if there's just a, a collaborator that you want to share it with, you can do that too.
Anybody have questions? Uh, I saw that you could sell your work through Gmail. I'm assuming that they keep those works for the profit. How much they pay? How much do you get? Um, actually, with Behance, we don't take any of the profits. Um, you know, depending on where you're selling the work through. So, if you guys have your own um, setup where you have your work posted and you're taking part of the transaction, we don't take any of it. Um, so, you, you know, it's not like the Apple like 30%. We take zero. Um, you know, so, if, yeah. If you're selling it on your own website, you're you can link there. And if you you know are just getting started and your means for selling is just to have people get in touch with you. You can list that as well and say if you're interested in purchasing a print or, um, you know, if it's a larger scale sculpture or painting, you can say contact me for details so that you can work out shipping and all of that. And people can do an email exchange. So we just want to facilitate the conversation, but we're not part of the transaction. Can you just go over how you would add a, a portfolio that you already have to more networks? So joining the more network if you already have a Behance portfolio, correct? Yes. Um, so we'll go up. Um, so I'm going to log into um, my uh, portfolio because I, I don't have uh, a link up with more at this point. So if you have an existing uh, Behance portfolio, um, what you'd want to do. We can share from here as, yeah. an, as an example with an example email. Yeah, so this is if so you go to the more page and you have to sign in with the more.edu um, email address. This is the test that we have here. You select uh, what your status is as a student. And when you go through, we made this like very, very, very easy. Do you have a if you have an account? Yes or no? Like yes or no. So if you want to sync your existing Behance account, you would click yes. And uh, what this will do is like you will now log in with your Behance credentials. Now we're sort of in a state of flux here, but we've uh, really worked this out. So if you have a, a much older Behance account, um, you log in with those Behance credentials. And if you don't know what those are, you can actually uh, find out your uh, email address or your password by contacting us. We can help you out with that. Um, we're transitioning everyone to something called Adobe ID that will help uh, facilitate logins for things like uh, Photoshop, Illustrator, things like that. Um, and then once you have that linked up, you are then all set. Um, it's just something with your Adobe ID, you just have to have linked up and you're ready to go. Sorry, I think it might not be working because we're using a test account here, but um, this, you know, this does work when you have a real email address. I think it's recognizing that we're bogus. We're trying to bug the system, but another, yeah, when you're on the main Behance network and you come to curated galleries, um, you'll be able to see more within the list of schools that we've partnered with, and um, this is another way that you can join by clicking this join button here. Um, and one great thing um, that we uh, forgot to mention is that once you do thank your portfolio, all of your work will be added so that you don't have to add any project twice. And anything that you've already put on to Behance will show there as well. And then from um, that point, you'll have the ability to choose whether or not you want all of your work to appear in both places, or let's say you've done a school project that you only want to appear on the Moore site, um, you can you can have it just appear there and not on the main Behance network as well. So looking at Noelle's uh, portfolio as an example, you'll see the different projects she's added here on the Moore site. But if I toggle over to Behance, you'll see that she's synced in there as well. So you'll see the same work showing twice, which means more exposure for her. How does it appear on the LinkedIn? So for LinkedIn, uh, if you want to do that, we now have a manual sync within LinkedIn. Um, on the LinkedIn page, when you're looking at your uh, main page, there's actually a 
And so we call it the box with the arrow icon. Uh, I don't know what they refer to it as. Um, but from there, you can actually link up your Behance portfolio and then manually transfer over um, projects and things like that. So you'll see on my LinkedIn uh, profile that as I scroll down, I've added projects underneath things like my summary or different um, jobs that I've had. So at Behance, I've added any projects that are relevant, whereas if you go to an older job, um, like when I was working at the Drake Hotel, you'll see projects that are associated there. And when I click on one of these, it's actually pulling all of this content directly from Behance. And you can, you know, view videos right here in the pop-up, look at all the images, and then see the rest of my work in my portfolio. So how do you, how do you embed them in LinkedIn? Um, so on the LinkedIn page, if you go to uh, edit your profile, um, and actually this is a great time to plug our FAQ because um, there's a lot of information on there. You see this, uh, uh, I'm going to circle it, you should be able to see a uh, plus button with the uh, square here. So this is to add a link, video, image, document, or presentation. When you go through here, um, you can actually just link the actual link from Behance there, yeah. um, and will allow you to then put in um, that project that you're working on from Behance. And the FAQ um, that Al mentioned actually has screenshots for all of these things. So if you come to our help page at any time and you have a question, let's say, like syncing with LinkedIn, um, you, can, uh, you can come here, type it into search, and then you'll see screenshots and step-by-step -step tutorials as to how you can um, add the work that way. And we also have some great videos on here for creating a portfolio or some of the things that we've talked about today. So that's a really great resource. And to find that, you can just go to behance.net forward slash FAQ. So, what your advice for like, I'm sorry, we're having trouble hearing you. Can you speak up into the into the mic or into the speaker? So what would your advice be for in between posting new projects? So I because I know you have a work in progress button that you can work through, but what else should we be doing? Um I think in between putting in new projects, I think getting in touch with other creatives is really helpful. Having a presence on the network is really great. Um, WIPs or work in progress is also a really great resource too. Um, so really anything that you're working on is a work in progress. So if it's let's say just a photo that you're retouching or you know something that you're working on in a larger scale, even just ideas or sketches, um, you know putting that work on there is really really great because it'll sort of remind people who are that we're like, oh yeah, Mary's working on this. Like let's see what they're up to. Um, it's also a great way to link out, you know, if you're working on something bigger with a client or something like that, you can see the progress as you're going through. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so even if you don't have projects on there, there's still a lot that you can do with Behance, and that's just really getting involved with like anything else in the community. It's getting involved, um, reaching out to other creatives, and having a dialogue between the two of you. And even though I might not be adding a new project every single day, um, one of my favorite things to do when I log in is just look at my activity feed. So whenever I log into Behance, I can see new projects that are being added by creatives that I follow or work that they're appreciating. So, for example, Clement is one of my colleagues, and I really like his taste. So I'll, I can come in here and see um, all of the different projects he's been appreciating recently and look at those, and that can be a really great way to start your day, just looking at really beautiful work, whether it's in your field or in another field, because you never know where ideas are going to come from, and this can be um, a fantastic way to stay on top of trends in your industry or just, you know, keep um, your finger on the pulse of what's being created, because um, for me, that's, that's extremely motivating and inspiring to keep going myself. It's actually a very good project that was uh, saved in here. Kind of shows a lot of different angles, and then at the end, it kind of shows you the floor plans, and um, you can see the photography is actually very mindful of what they're showing. And uh, from here, also, like we were talking about, one of the things you can do, you know, if you're not uploading work, is something called collections, um, and this is a way to 
Um, if you're seeing something that you love on Behance and you have different tastes or different um, ideas, if you're working on a project, you can add a project to something called a collection. Um, and this can just be a collection of, this is something, home inspiration. So if you're looking to, you know, set up your dorm room in a different way or something like that, you can have all your, it's kind of like mood boards sort of, but also, you know, you can really tailor it to anything that you want. Um, I had something that I was working on a project to find different, uh, <laughs> different projects that had to do with like football animation. Really, really specific, but, you know, instead of having them as bookmarks on a browser somewhere, I just add them into a collection on Behance, and then I can pull them up whenever I want. Um, and those you can share with people as well. So if you have a team, you can share that collection with people as well. They can follow it and add stuff to it also. Um, and then from there, you can just do what you need to do. And creating a collection is another thing that if you feel a little lost after this presentation, you can always come to the FAQ page. And I, you know, even do this myself sometimes just to make sure that you're following all the right steps. So you can search for collection and then um, you'll be able to see all the different screenshots associated with that and how you can create a collection from A to Z. How would you add a work in progress or post from Photoshop? And also, um, how do you control who can see that? Can you make it for just a specific group if you want only their feedback? Um, sorry, I only had the first two, which was uh, adding a work in progress, and uh, you kind of cut out at the end. Oh, it's just, um, is there, how do you control uh, who, can you control who sees that in, in case you only want feedback from, say, your classmates? Yes. So, again, all of these things are listed on the FAQ page if you're looking for screenshots. But in the example that Al showed before, when you're on your um, individual project, when you're editing the settings, you have the ability to choose who can see it. Yeah. So. For projects, you can do that. Um, on the width, um, it's a little bit different. I'll go back to the, the sort of like the first half of the question that you had, um, going from Photoshop uh, into the width. Um, in Photoshop, I don't think we, I don't know if we have Photoshop in this machine, but on the newest versions of uh, Photoshop CC, when you go into the file menu and you go to share a project, um, you will need to link up your uh, Behance account with Photoshop. So if you have Creative Cloud, that's actually like one step closer into doing that. Um, and from there, you can then uh, export that thing that you're working on in Photoshop directly as a whip into, uh, into Behance. Um, right. That goes with uh, InDesign as well. And when you're editing the visibility, you can take the steps I just took here. So when you come to edit a project in the third and final step, you'll be prompted to set your settings. And this is where Al mentioned you can enter in any project tags to be found in search results, add a co-owner, um, select your copyright settings, and then you'll also see projects visible to. So you can decide which networks you'd like them to be visible to, or you can limit the visibility here and say that you only want this project to be shown to specific members. Like I could say, you know, I only want to share it with Al. And then he would be able to give me feedback and we would be able to make changes before I made this live to the public. Well, thank you for the presentation. Great. I hope it was helpful. Thanks for the great questions. Um, you can always get in touch if you think of anything else um, that comes up or any other questions. But we really do highlight the FAQ page because that's, you know, one of the biggest ways that you can see visual representations to things that you're trying to do on the site. But first and foremost, um, we think that the most important takeaway today is for those that haven't already, just creating a portfolio and walking through um, the steps for adding your work and spending time on um, everything that you add, like what we highlighted. So your text, your images, and um, building a great representation of the work that you're creating out more. Okay.
Great, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.